Hello, hello. My name is Callista, and welcome back to Dragon Age Inquisition. In the last episode, we were preparing to head to Valroyo to try and convince the Grand Clerics that Ionor isn't a monster to be feared. She is a woman. She is an elf, like so many others, and the Chantry really does not need to be afraid of this Inquisition. Now then, we do, once again, have to deal with the war table. And then afterwards, we are heading straight there. Let me just start my timer. There we go. Now then, let's see. Who reported in? Uh, investigate Sorul. Our emissary has been shown a warm welcome to Sorul. He will remain for now as an advisor to the Marquis, observing the town. Josephine. Lovely. Investigate the strange chalk markings. A spy's report. Post set up along the Imperial Highway, ostensibly to guard trade routes and facilitate procuring supplies for the Inquisition. Eyes on all approaches. Fourth night. A caravan carrying refugees makes camp nearby for protection. After midnight, a young woman on crutches makes small talk with the patrol guard. After he passes, she crouches and makes the mark on a tent post. The woman pretends for half an hour to know nothing. When it becomes clear the ruse will not work, she kisses an Andrastian locket and says, Glory to those across the seas. She dies. The locket was poison. Th oh, I do. I do like this quest chain shall we call it i i think this is so interesting i know this last bit i know would feel rather guilty about you know this woman died for really no reason i think i know would be like oh crap that that wasn't what i intended my goodness like oh dear but but me callista oh i i find this so intriguing and last, but by no means least, build watchtowers. Commander Cullen, with the watchtowers built, we've had advance warning of demon and bandit attacks. The area is safer for both the refugees and the farmers who had fled the nearby fields. Much appreciated, sir. It's good to know that the Inquisition is willing to put in the time to help these people. Corporal Vale, yes, this... This was exactly what Ainor wanted. The people know that Inquisition won't faff about, won't get other people to do the job. No, the Inquisition is willing to, you know, you know, pull up their britches, get their hands dirty, and make things safer for the common folk. Yeah, perfect. Now then, back to all they. Ah, oh, address the Chantry in Valroyo. Ionor is not looking forward to this. The remaining Chantry clerics have declared the Inquisition heretical. Attempts to gather allies against the breach have been rebuffed, and at this moment we could not step foot into the capital without being attacked by a mob or arrested. We must convince the Chantry to permit us entry into the city so we can show them the Herald of Andraste is not the monster they believe. Having the Herald address the clerics is not a terrible idea. You can't be serious. Mother Giselle isn't wrong. At the moment, the Chantry's only strength is that they are united in opinion. And we should ignore the danger to the Herald. Let's ask her. <laughs> oh, oh, I'm immediately drawn to this one. Ionor, Ionor isn't a public speaker. She gets tongue-tied. She just, like, this, this sounds like her own personal circle of hell. Uh, this may not actually help. This is a terrible plan. I'm not worried. No, no, we are worried. Ooh. Here's the thing, they... They do have a point. You know, Giselle and Josie, they do have a point. The the Chantry mothers, they are currently united. Surely, if some of them saw her, if they talked to Ionor, then they would realise, oh, this is a, a very 
understanding young woman. She's not claiming to be the Herald of Andraste. She's she's just trying to make things better for the people. Like, surely there would be some clerics who could be swayed by Ionor's sincerity. However, this this is all they we're talking about. These are people who are experts in the grand game, and Ionor is not an expert in the grand game. Like this could go this could go in the complete opposite direction. Her sincerity could be viewed as stupidity or incompetence. It like it oh no. I I really feel like Ionor is like, Josie, why aren't you doing this? You're the diplomat. Can you come with me? Like what what is this? I Aino does want to help. Aino really wants to help. It's why she's here. It's why she's so willing to, like, smile and wave, if you get what I'm saying, to the people who are genuinely like, oh, you're you're the Herald of Andraste. Oh, but you've brought us such hope. We love you. We love you. Like, to those people, Aino is willing to be like, okay, thank you. Yeah, Andraste, woo! Ah. Like, she's she's willing to put up with that. She's willing to take on that pressure because she wants to make things better. However, I Ionor knows her own mind. She knows what she is and isn't capable of. And this is not... This really isn't in her wheelhouse. She's not a speaker. And I do think she would she would speak up just to say that, like, Okay, it's what tone do I want to go with? If this is something like, oh, well, that's a stupid fucking idea, then that, that no, Aina wouldn't put it like that. I think she has more tact than that. I, I do think she would definitely speak up to say, hey, I could make things so much worse. I'm not a public speaker. I really don't know what I'm doing here. It's how blunt would she be? This is like a serious meeting. This this is a serious meeting. Now is not the time for joking about. I think, yeah, she's, she's gonna try and be tactful. I'm more concerned this won't actually solve any problems. I agree. It just lends credence to the idea that we should care what the Chantry says. I will go with her. Mother Giselle said she could provide us names. Use them. But why? This is nothing but a... What choice do we have, Liliana? Right now we can't approach anyone for help with the breach. Use what influence we have to call the clerics together. Once they are ready, we will see this through. Hmm. I I like that. That wasn't entirely what Ionor meant. The whole like, I'm just more concerned this won't actually solve anything. And then Cullen jumps in with like, yeah, it just lean it just leads leads? Lens, excuse me. I do speak English, I swear I do. Um Cullen jumped in with, yeah, this just lends credence to the idea that we should be listening to the chantry. And Ionor is internally thinking, no, that's not that's not what I meant. That's not what I meant. I'm not saying we should disregard or regard the Chantry. That isn't my place. I'm not Andrastian. I don't feel comfortable inserting myself into someone else's religion. I'm, like, she's not talking about the Chantry. She's just like, no, I'm, I'm a really bad public speaker. This isn't why. Why does no one understand the things I say? Like... Ainor's just having a bit of a panic in the background. You all can't see it because we are focused on the lovely Josephine. But in the background, Ainor's like, does anyone have a paper bag? Does anyone have a paper bag for me to blow into? Please. <laughs> Please. Yeah, we read this. Off we go. Game. Ah, there we go. I do think Valrio is so beautiful.
the city still mourns. Just a guess seeker, but I think they all know who we are. Your skills of observation never fail to impress me, Varric. My Lady Herald. You're one of Leliana's people. What have you found? The Chantry Mothers await you, but so do a great many Templars. There are Templars here? People seem to think the Templars will protect them from... from the Inquisition. They're gathering on the other side of the market. I think that's where the Templars intend to meet you. Only one thing to do, then. They wish to protect the people from us? Hmm. Yeah, we, we expected this. We knew there would be some kind of reaction. But I didn't expect the Templars to make an appearance. The people may just be assuming what the Templars will do. I've heard of no concrete plans. You think the Order's return to the Fold, maybe? To deal with us upstarts? I know Lord Seeker Lucius. I can't imagine him coming to the Chantry's defense. Not after all that's occurred. Return to Haven. Someone will need to inform them if we are delayed. As you say, my lady. Mm, oh, this... <laughs> Getting off to a flying start. This is just... Aynor had... She had so hoped that this would be peaceful. But no, we are we are jumping straight into, you know, blades and suspicion. That is... That's just fantastic. The avenue of her reflective thought. Inscribed upon a plaque. Our Lady and the actors of her rise and fall. Her message and visage are worth repeating. Yes, I, I like this. I like this little detail of like, you, you come into Valroyo, you have these beautiful statues, you see this, and you're just like, oh, this is going to be amazing. And trust me, it, it doesn't disappoint. They did such a good job designing Valroyo. Mafarath's blood guilt. Beneath, scratched by a vandal. And his head suddenly weighs too much. Ah, oh, it does. What a very heavy head, this poor man. Matharath's remorse. Beneath, scratched by a vandal. At meeting the low door frame. For as we know, Matharath was incredibly tall. That poor man. The bump on his head. Anything else? Yes, there should be more. Mafarath's regret, beneath, scratched by a vandal, about his unfortunate hair. So unfortunate, so bald, my goodness. Solus, do you empathise? Do you empathise with this man? Look at it. Look at the baldness, Solus. Look at it. Look at your shame. That is a joke. There is nothing wrong with being bald. Mafarath's penitence, beneath, scratched by a vandal, and unrelated headache. Oh, I... I feel you there, buddy. <laughs> I get so many of those, my goodness. The avenue of her reflective thought. The avenue is inspirational and unintentionally hilarious. But wise travellers do not linger in their respects. Not just because the bazaar awaits, but because the area before the back-turned statues is treacherous. Local legend has it that the child empress, Amy, abused the opportunity of... I did read that correctly, I'm sorry. Local legend has it that the child empress, Amy, abused the opportunity of religious repose to relieve herself beneath the gaze of Our Lady. Unable to discipline the toddling leader, her attendants instead chastised the statues and had them turned in supposed embarrassment. True or not, foolish youths dare each other to soil the spot in similar fashion, and a place of otherwise reverent thought always carries a faint odour about it. Oh no! Oh no, this place smells like piss! That is... That... You walk into this beautiful place and just... What's that on the breeze? Oh lord, no! Oh god, god damn it! 
God damn these Orlesian youths. Exerted and torn from a disposable walking tour of the capital by Philum, a bard. Philum, uh, for anyone of interest, um, for anyone who is interested, rather, uh, Philium is actually related to Inquisitor Trevelyan. His full name is Philium Trevelyan. So I, I like that little detail. That's fun. Hello? You all right? Oh, look at this. Look at it. Look at how beautiful it is. It's so glittering and fabulous. Oh, and it's in such high definition. I will say I haven't I haven't messed about with um the settings. I haven't turned post processing up yet. For anyone who is interested, I'm feeling a lot better. I'm feeling a lot less stressed than I did last week. However, the issues I had with I think it was Tuesday's episode that has really scuppered my recording schedule. It just it caused me too much stress and it was it took way longer to film than I had originally anticipated and as such I'm still trying to get myself back into a place where I'm like, "Oh, I'm actually ahead on recordings." It's uh, it's a faff, but things things are slowly returning to normal. Stand wary, guardsman. The inquisition is Along with the Herald of Andraste. They say they found the knife here covered with the Divine's blood. Let her pass. The Inquisition is the Templar's problem, and they'll fix it. Actually, they didn't find me covered in the Divine's blood. They found me covered in Fade Dust. Fuck you. Much offence. Oh, hello. Templars will stand for us and help Valroyo return to morning. Oh, okay, sir. Good people of Valroyo, hear me. Together, we mourn our divine. A naive and beautiful heart silenced by treachery. You wonder what will become of her murderer. Well, wonder no more. Behold, the so-called Herald of Andraste, claiming to rise where our beloved fell. We say this is a false prophet. The Maker would say no elf in our hour of need. Mm. I never claimed to be. We have a real enemy. Stop this now. Let us talk peacefully. Here's the, now, now isn't the time to get into a slanging match. And here's the, on one hand, I know, I know, can agree. This, this is it's hurtful. You know, the maker would send no elf in our hour of need. It's hurtful. However, I know's like, yeah, I'm, I never claimed that the maker sent me or anything like that like you'll just believe it however it 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 is between what these two i feel like right now just getting into like well i never claim to be and if you believe i am then fuck you like it's it's getting into a slanging match that's not why einor is here einor i think is just like okay like let's talk we don't need to argue in the streets. Can't we just sit down and hash this out, please? We came here in peace simply to talk. And this is what you do. I implore you, let us sit down together to deal with the real threat. It's true. The Inquisition seeks only to end this madness before it is too late. It is already too late. The Templars have returned to the Chantry. They will face this Inquisition and the people will be safe once more. Still yourself. She is beneath us. I know it's just like, what the fuck? Like, she was rude. She was rude, but there was no need to punch her in the back of the head. Uh, 
Am I supposed to be impressed? Not here for us then. Save me the trouble. How dare you? Um, I, I feel like this is the, the best one. Like, yeah, she, she was being incredibly rude to Ionor. She wasn't letting her speak, but like, there's, there was no need to resort to violence. Like, she was an old woman. Like, you don't punch old women in the head. And like, I know I said I like to stick to, uh, either the, the emotional or the curious options. That isn't an option. And here's the thing. None of these fit Ironor. Ironor would not be happy about a woman being punched. And these are like, am I supposed to be impressed? No, fuck that. Like, Ironor would have a, re have a reaction to like, oh my god, this, this poor lady just got floored in front of everyone. Holy shit. What's the meaning of this? Her claim to authority is an insult, much like your own. Lord Seeker Lucius, it's imperative that we speak with... You will not address me. Lord Seeker? Creating a heretical movement, raising up a puppet as Andraste's prophet, you should be ashamed. You should all be ashamed. The Templars failed no one when they left the Chantry to purge the mages. You are the ones who have failed. You who'd leash our righteous swords with doubt and fear. If you came to appeal to the Chantry, you are too late. The only destiny here that demands respect is mine. Hmm. Help us close the breach. Templars, join as Cullen did. Then why are you here? Ooh. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I, I will say straight off the bat, if Ionor was like, if someone just came up to her and was like, who, who would you rather approach for help? The mages or the Templars? Ionor would be like, the mages. Hands down the mages. Because Ionor just on a, on a certain level, she doesn't trust the Templar order. People within the order, like Colin, she's like, hey, you seem perfectly fine. Like, um, she's all right with individuals, but the organization as a whole, she's kind of like, mm, you've done some shitty things to multiple groups, including my own, including my clan specifically. So like, I don't, I'm willing to trust you on an individual by individual basis. However, your organization, no thank you. Yeah, I'm, I'd rather stick with the mages. I may not understand what they're going through. I don't really understand magical gubbins. But, like, I, I trust them more than y'all. I'm very sorry. At, ooh, at the same time, she's she wouldn't refuse help. Not, not this one. This, this is a little bit like, Templars, join us, Colin did. Like, no, that doesn't, that doesn't fit her. It's, it's too authoritative. And, I mean, she wouldn't turn down their help, however, her gut is to go to the mages for help. They aren't offering any help, to be fair. They aren't offering, so I don't think she'd ask. Yeah, I get that. That does just leave the question, are you here so like, solely to punch a lady in the back of her head in front of a crowd? That, like, is that why you're here? If you're not here to help the Chantry, then you just came to make speeches. I came to see what frightens old women so, and to laugh. But Lord Seeker, what if she really was sent by the Maker? What if... You are called to a higher purpose. Do not question. I will make the Templar Order a power that stands alone against the Void. We deserve recognition. Independence. You have shown me nothing. And the Inquisition, less than nothing. 
Templars, Val Royo is unworthy of our protection. We march. Charming fellow, isn't he? Has Lord Seeker Lucius gone mad? I was about to say I didn't like that. You know, they're like, if you're not here to defend the Chantry, then you're just here to make speeches. I was like, oh, that sounds very angry. That sounds very angry. But then the camera panned over to what's going in the background there. She's still unconscious. And I do, I do think Ionor would be very upset with that very aggravated there was no need for that display absolutely none you just had her punched because you could and she's an old woman it doesn't matter that she was slagging off iron or two minutes before like she was an old woman she didn't deserve that so you know what i think i think iron would be extremely angry with that man so yeah that that does fit um hmm. has lord seeker lucius gone mad well how how well do you know him cassandra do you know him very well? He took over the Seekers of Truth two years ago, after Lord Seeker Lambert's death. He was always a decent man, never given to ambition and grandstanding. This is very bizarre. Hmm. Will he see reason? So much for Templar help. We'll find another way. Here's the thing. It, whether or not the Templars are helping the Inquisition, that's kind of irrelevant. They're still dicking about Thedas murdering people like that like will he see reason in that regard do you think he can be reasoned with i hope so if not him there are surely others in the order who don't feel as he does either way we should first return to haven and inform the others uh, we we should first make sure that that lady is okay uh you know we'll, we'll speak to you first Excuse me? Excuse me, but is what they're saying real? The Inquisition's going to fix the hole in the sky? Hmm. It's true, that's the plan. Why do you ask? <laughs> I don't think Ionor likes saying it's true, because they could fail. They could fail at fixing the hole. However, we can't... We can't let the common folk worry. We need to present this like, yep, we're going to do it. We're going to get it done. Don't you worry because we're the ones who should be worrying. We're going to put that pressure on ourselves so that you can sleep soundly at night. So, yeah, I, I guess just, you know, straight up, don't worry, madam. It's true. You're going to be safe. That's what we're attempting, yes. No one is doing anything. The chancer is useless and the Templars and Raste. I never thought they'd abandon us. Listen, your camp will need food. I have contacts. We'll have deliveries there in days. You want to help the Inquisition? Never been part of something this big before, but if your Inquisition's going to seal the sky, I want to help. Hmm. No, thank you. All right, go to Haven. Cassandra, I think... I think Ionor would be a little, like... She'd be a little bit like, well, it's it's not really my decision. I'm not in charge here, C Cassandra. You're more in, in charge than I am. What do you think, Cassandra? I think the woman is asking you and not me. Well, she is. The Herald of Andraste. Yes, I understand. Haven is a mess, but we won't turn away anyone willing to help. Invite her, if it pleases you. And I know once again, like, please don't call me that. Please don't call me that. Yeah, uh, if, if you want to help, miss, then absolutely. Head to Haven, then. We need good people. I don't know if I'm that, but it will be nice to see. Thank you. No worries. And there we go. We have just acquired an agent. Fabulous. Now then, hmm, you know what? It's been a while since we read any codex entries. I only have a minute left on my timer, so I think I'm just going to have a little bit of a read. Um, yes, that was the Tarmogen. And apparently we've read this. Yes, Fort Connor. Okay. Ferelden after the Blight. One need only stroll through the Denerim market to appreciate Ferelden's resilience. 
you would be hard-pressed to believe that the Darkspawn ravaged the city within our lifetime. Scars remain for the people who lived through it, but life moves forward. Now children play in the streets. Children for whom the blight is a story their parents tell. I once heard a small boy ask what a Darkspawn was. To him, it was only a word he heard from the older youths. We teach that a learned child is a blessing upon his parents and unto the maker. Andraste, forgive me, but I felt joy at his smiling ignorance. It is thus a wonder Queen Honora would risk the stability she has worked so hard to maintain. Despite the events at... Excuse you. Despite the events at Kirkwall, Ferelden continues to offer refuge to the rebel mages, which will only bring trouble to our doorsteps. It already has. Rumours among the merchants suggest that Starkhaven places sanctions on trade as a sign of protest. One hears of conflict in the hinterlands between Templars and mages. Mother Diana says I am to accompany her to the conclave in Haven. She says to have faith in Divine Justinia, and that whatever comes, we shall see the Maker's will done. I think of those smiling children who have not grown up with death and fear, and I pray it is so. A letter from Sister Kira of the Denerim Chantry to her sister in the Free Marches. And we'll read another one, because why not? Haven. I would like to speak to you of Haven, the village in the Frostbacks, close to the Temple of Sacred Ashes. We are all aware of its past. It was home to the disciples of Andraste, as they called themselves. Descended from the people who built the temple itself, they had strayed over years of isolation from their once noble roots to become dragon worshippers. After the hero of Ferelden discovered the Temple of Sacred Ashes, which the disciples guarded jealously, what remained of the cult moved on, and Haven was abandoned to the ice and the snow. I passed through Haven on my pilgrimage to see the Temple of Sacred Ashes. There was a storm, and I took shelter in the hall of Haven's Chantry. Though they were dusty from neglect, the walls of the- Excuse me! Oh, flipping neck, having a coughing fit. Bear with me. Jesus. Oof. I'm very glad I always keep a drink nearby when I record. Damn. Don't know what was going on there. Pardon me, I do apologise. Um, where was I? There was a storm, and I took shelter in the hall of Haven's Chantry. Though they were dusty from neglect, the walls of that lonely place were strong, and shielded me from the biting winds. Peace came upon me, and my eyes were opened to Haven's incredible beauty. It could not be overcome by the pain and the horror of the past. It could not be masked by decay and disuse. It would not be forgotten. Haven is precious to all they, to the Chantry and to the Sunburst Throne for its historical and religious significance. It is my will that Haven be restored rededicated to the service of Andraste and preserved for the ages. Let it be a sanctuary for the pilgrims who seek out the Temple of Sacred Ashes. May they rest here beneath the cold, bright skies. May the glory of the Maker be revealed to them as they gaze upon the grey peaks that are the work of his hand. Now and forevermore, let this be a haven for the faithful." From a speech by Divine Justinia V in 935 Dragon. There we go. Excellent. And with that, I am going to bring this episode to a close right here. In the next one, we explore Val Royale. We see what can be done here. But until then, please remember to like if you enjoyed. Leave a comment below. And if you wanted to subscribe, it would be very much appreciated. I've been Callista. Thanks for watching and see you in the next episode.